Hello everyone, welcome to Scaria.com. I'm Dr. Hina Khan and today we're going to discuss the viral and the granulomatous kinds of conjunctivitis cases. So how can we differentiate between a viral and on the other hand between the granulomatous kind of conjunctivitis cases? It's the chronicity of the disease and that is basically highlighting the way towards the chronic infections such as the tuberculous infections and the syphilitic infections that are responsible for the granulomatous infections in the conjunctiva. Over here, we'll be discussing, first of all, the adenoviral conjunctivitis. So it is the most common variety of the viral conjunctivitis that occurs in the patients. We'll be discussing the clinical features, primarily the signs and symptoms that are highlighting the adenoviral kind of conjunctivitis. And how do we treat these patients is, again, very important. The significance of epidemic uh, keratoconjunctivitis. How do we educate patients towards the prevention of the epidemics such as the uh, keratoconjunctivitis epidemics? And what are the clinical features of these epidemic keratoconjunctivitis cases? The differential diagnosis is again very important over here because as a clinician, you should know how to differentiate between the different, uh, different variants of the viral keratoconjunctivitis conjunctivitis cases. We'd be discussing the non-specific acute follicular conjunctivitis, which is another variant for the viral conjunctivitis cases. Uh, the signs and symptoms, the differentials, and the treatment modalities that are available out there would be discussed along with this discussion. We'd be outlining the clinical features for the pharyngeoconjunctival fever, which is another clinical situation that you have to deal with. You should know how to manage such cases of uh, PCF, that is the pharyngeoconjunctival fever. Then we have the Newcastle conjunctivitis, which is another variant for the viral conjunctivitis. It is the truly spread of the diseased owls, and it's another interesting fact that is relating to this Newcastle conjunctivitis. Uh, you should know how to diagnose such cases, and obviously, uh, the treatment modalities that are available for this Newcastle conjunctivitis that would be discussed along uh, with these clinical scenarios. We'd be discussing the acute herpetic conjunctivitis, outlining the clinical features, and then relating to the uh, differential diagnosis of this acute herpetic conjunctivitis is very important. The treatment modalities and how to manage such patients uh, is quite challenging sometimes. The acute hemorrhagic conjunctivitis would be discussed over here. The signs and symptoms, the typical clinical picture for this hemorrhagic conjunctivitis would be discussed along with the treatment modalities for such cases of hemorrhagic conjunctivitis. Then we have another condition which is quite prevalent in the neonates, that is the ophthalmia neonatarium. We'd be discussing the uh, particular clinical features, that is obviously a bilateral condition that is occurring in the newborns, and it's usually the time period is limited towards less than 30 days. Then we have the granulomatous inflammations. It's obviously the chronic infections that we're talking about, the tuberculous conjunctivitis, the syphilitic conjunctivitis. That would be discussed over here. What are the clinical typical features and what are the lab investigations that are quite peculiar uh, to such conditions of granulomatous inflammations? That would be discussed over here. Then we'd be discussing a very important syndromic condition that is the Perinod's oculoglandular syndrome. We'd be discussing and relating this syndrome with the viral conjunctivitis cases that we've already discussed. We have another condition, which is the ophthalmia nodosa, that is basically highlighted by a nodular appearance uh, that appears on the bulbar conjunctiva. How do you treat these cases and what are the typical signs and symptoms that are prevalent in such cases of ophthalmia nodosa that would be discussed over here in this lecture. We have a range of ophthalmopathies being discussed on our website. Uh, so do watch these lectures on our website. Thanks for watching scaria.com and get access to watch the complete lecture.